A pergola that's attached to your house can be a great addition. It's a good way to create a useful, sheltered outdoor area and give you shade from the sun. It'll also add to the visual appeal of your house. With a bit of initial planning and prep, building one yourself isn't as hard as what you might think. I'll take you through the job step by step so you can do it yourself. Before you start, there are a few important things that you need to know. While you don't actually need a building permit, you will have to adhere to the building regulations. So you'll need to get a licensed building practitioner or LBP to help design it for you. This will help you make sure that you're doing it right and that you're using the correct materials. When designing the structure with your LBP, there are a few things you should just keep in mind. You want to make sure it's high enough so the beam doesn't obscure your view from inside. You want to build it so it's keeping with the overall style of your house. And if you think you might want to put a roof on your pergola, then it'll need to be under 20 square metres. And you'll want to design it with a fall so the water can run off it. Right, here's the plan I've had drawn up by my LBP. It's got all the measurements I need and it tells me exactly what materials I need to order. So all you need to do is take this into Mitre 10 and the guys in the drive through will help you out with selecting the right materials and a trailer or delivery if you need. Now, as per our plan, our first post is going to be face fixed to the outside of their house here and it's going to be in line with a corner. Now, our second post will be on the outside of these steps and our third post is going to be right on the outside in line with the corner of the house. So the first thing I need to do is get a parallel line from the house to the corner and put that mark down here so I know exactly where this post is going. Right, so we're just going to butt the tape hard up against that weatherboard under the doorstep and we've got 2140 to our corner box. So I'm going to take that 2140 and measure that off the house for our end post. Okay, there's our 2140. That's to the outside of the post. Now, if you're in the situation where your pergola came to the end of your deck, you could just put your post on the outside so you're just digging straight into the earth. But in this situation, obviously, we've got to remove a few decking boards so we can dig a hole underneath the deck. Now, this is just a rough guide at this stage where our post is going to be situated. I will run a string line down the side of the house so I can get that pinpointed exactly correct. So the next thing we need to do is remove some of this decking board so we can actually start digging a hole where our post is going to go. Now, a great little tool for pulling out the nails are these little dog bars. Absolutely brilliant. Take care when you're removing your decking boards because you could reuse them. These ones are badly split, so I'll be replacing them. Okay, so I'm going to mark my 2140 back on our joist here. Now, I still need to get exact position this way in line with the house, but I still know that my post hole is going to be about here. So what I can do is start digging that hole, and when my post goes in, I'll get an exact position of it with a string line a little bit later on down the track. Now I've dug our hole nice and deep as per the specifications on the plan and also I'll put a block of concrete in the bottom of there just so I've got nice and solid bearing for our post to sit on. Now I've also run a string line down the side of the house parallel with the house. I've run a string line 100 millimetres from the side of the house. This avoids any uneven surfaces on the side of the house. That means that the distance from the string line to the corner is 63 millimetres. Now, I want to be 63 millimetres away from the line. That's up to the corner of our house. So, as you can see, 63 millimetres, that's where our post is going to sit. So, we've got a joist in the way. There's nothing I can do about that. I'm just going to clamp my post to the side of that joist. And later on down the track, I'll show you how we compensate for that. So, now's the time. Put in our post, brace it up and put some concrete in. Now, I'm just going to use this little clamp to hold that in position. Now, I've just lined up my post with our mark on our joist. All I need to do now is plumb the post up and put a brace down. Now, these posts that I am using are glue laminated and the H5 treated. That way, it's not gonna twist or warp. They're the best type of post you can possibly use when you're building a pergola or a veranda. 
I'll just pull that plump. Cool, now that's looking pretty good. All I've got to do now is fix the end of my brace and then put some concrete in the hole. Okay, just before I throw my concrete in, I want to get rid of my clamp to get that out of the way. So I'm just going to screw off the post to our joist. That's going to be permanent from now on. Now, I've got a pretty long post, so what I want to do is just throw another support going back the other way. And let's just make sure that's nice and plumb, cramp it off, and then we're good for our concrete. You need to have at least 600 millimetres deep of concrete to secure your post. Rightio, that's looking pretty good. Now all I've got to do is exactly the same for the other post. Let it set for 24 hours and then we're good to go. To determine the position of the middle post, I've run a string line from the corner of the house to the corner post. Rightio, I've let my two posts set in concrete for 24 hours. Now, I've got one more post to attach, but I don't actually want to fix that to the house at this point because I want to chop the post off at exactly the right height. Now, to get that height, I first have to establish exactly where our ribbon plate is going to be attached to the house. As per the plan, the bottom of the ribbon plate needs to be 2680 millimetres from the deck. Okay, now this is just an example of what our ribbon plate's going to look like. It's going to be attached to the face of the weatherboards like this. Now, I have a couple of packers that I'm going to attach behind the ribbon plate. That's to allow for any water to run down if it ever should get in there. Now, this is also an example of what our rebate is going to look like. Now, the rebate is so we can have our rafter sit in there quite nice and tidy like that. What I need to do next is get a length of our ribbon plate. Now, as per the dimensions on the plan, it says it's 2680 to the underside of my ribbon plate. So what I'm going to do is just put a nail in the weatherboards at that height. Then I can use this nail to hook my tape on to get the length of our ribbon plate. Okay, so that's 57, 53. Right, the next thing I need to do is just mark a level line on our weatherboards to indicate the exact location of the bottom of the ribbon plate. Okay, the next thing I need to do is establish exactly where our studs are. Now to do that, there's a couple of things you want to look out for. The main thing is exactly where our nailing is. So you can sort of see a little bit of paint cracking on the weatherboard. That there indicates exactly where our stud is. So we want to be looking out for the old nail lines. And then just above our mark, we want to put the center of our stud. Okay, now it is important that we locate exactly where all the studs are because these are going to be our solid fixing points for when we put our coach screws through the ribbon plate into the house. Rightio, the next thing I need to do is just measure out exactly where all those marks are. And I'm just going to write it on the weatherboard. All these marks will be hidden by a ribbon plate. Four, nine, ten. I've marked the measurements of all the studs on the weatherboards. Now it's time to transfer them to the ribbon plate. 3390, 4910. The plan shows seven rafters for this pergola. That's a total of six spaces between them. The overall length of the ribbon plate is 5753 millimetres. I've divided that by six, and that's given me a measurement of 959 millimetres centre to centre. So 959 is from the centre of one rafter to the centre of the next, which is what we're going to mark out now. So now we're just going to mark out the thickness of our rafter onto our ribbon plate. So my rafter is 42 millimetres thick. So I just want to divide that by two, so I go half on either side of the line. So that's 21 millimetres either side of the centre. We'll just square that off. So that's one side, there's the centre, and then we'll just use it, the actual thickness of our rafter and put that on there. And we're just going to rebate that out later. So we're just going to do the same for all of our marks. 
Rightio, now I'm just about ready to rebait out my ribbon plate. So I've set my saw blade to about 10 millimeters, so I'm gonna take a 10 mil rebate out of my ribbon. Now, just before I rebait out, I'm just gonna use the side of my square with the side of my circular saw. That'll help me give a nice straight line to make sure I'm up against my marks nice and tidy. I'm cutting a series of fins into the timber. Which I then simply remove with a chisel. Right, now that's looking lovely. Now we just want to do exactly the same for all the others. Now the most conventional way of attaching our rafters to our ribbon plate is just a face fix like this. Now the reason I've decided to rebait out our ribbon plate, it's just going to give me a stronger join. It's going to stop all our rafters from twisting. And also, if you get any sort of movement whatsoever in the house or the pergola, that all that would do is open that up. Now our rebate is gonna hide any sort of movement whatsoever. Now, regardless whether you face fix or you rebate out your ribbon plate, we're still gonna to have to have a mechanical fixing. Now, what I mean by mechanical fixing is something like a joist hanger or a multi-grip bracket sitting on the side there. Now, that's gonna hold that there absolutely fine, no problem. The only thing is, it looks absolutely terrible. So, I'm gonna eliminate that, and I've decided to nail a 12KN strap on the back where my rebate is, and then once my rafters go in, all I'm going to do is fold that over and nail that down, and that gives me a really nice, strong mechanical fixing. Now these are the marks where my studs are on the wall. Now as per my specs on the plan, it says my coat screws have to be no more than a metre apart, which works out pretty good here. Obviously I'm not going to choose that one. That's hard up against where my raft is going to go. So what I'll do is I'll just square this down and drill a hole in the centre of that one and the same on this one here. Now we'll just do the same for all the others. Okay, now I'm using a 12mm coach screw, so I'm going to drill a 13mm hole through our ribbon plate. You'll need a mate to help you position the ribbon plate. Next, I'm pre-drilling the coach screw holes. This is a timber weatherboard house. If yours is different, just refer to your plan. Rightio, the next thing we need to do is attach our packers to the back of our ribbon plate. So like in this example, I've got a 20 mil thick packer. That's what council regs state. Now, I've made these 45 mil thick wide. So what I'm gonna do is cut up a whole lot of packers, about 20 mil thick by 45 wide. And then I'm just gonna pin them to the back of our ribbon plate and then I'm going to tip the ribbon plate back over. Then I'm going to drill all the way through with our 13mm hole and take that ribbon up to the wall all in one piece with the packers attached. Rightio, all the holes are drilled through our packers. Now it's the big thing, I have to take this up and attach it to the house. Now as part of council regulations, I'm attaching neoprene washer in behind our packer so it sandwiches up nice and tight to create a watertight seal between the house and our ribbon plate. Now nail each strap to the back of the ribbon plate, centred on each rebate. Righty, I've got my packers attached to the back of the ribbon plate. The neoprene washer's on there, ready to go. I've pre-drilled a hole. My coach screws are sitting in there, nice, ready to go as well. And I've also attached our strap. So all I have to do is attach it to the wall. Now, we're just gonna make sure that we're gonna follow our line the whole way. We're just gonna start from one end and work our way to the end. Obviously, you're gonna need a mate to give you a hand. Now, a great little tip when you are putting these up is use an impact driver. And I've got a socket set attachment on the end. It's just gonna make the whole job a lot easier.
Now, whilst I'm up the scaff, I thought I'd just take all our dimensions of exactly where our rebates are on our ribbon plate. Then, when I jump down, I can mark them all out on our beam. 28.58. Now, I want to put a five degree fall on this pergola, so as per my plan, if I put a level line from the top of my ribbon plate across, I come down 193, that'll give me exactly five degree four. Okay, so that's 193. Now that is to the top of our beam. Now I've got a little cross section of our beam. That there is gonna sit flush on the outside. And so what we're gonna do is just physically mark the bottom of our beam. Now that there is the top of our post. So we can now measure that and cut our post to suit. 23.58. Okay, my post is cut to length. I've attached my 20 mil packers on. I've got the neoprene washer there. I've drilled a hole all the way through. The only thing I have to do now is attach this to the house. Now this is pretty much exactly the same as the way we attached our ribbon plate to the house. Fantastic. Right, we're all set up now to chop off the top of our other two posts. Just to recap, the 193mm measurement is from the top of the ribbon plate. This gives us our 5 degree fall. Add the width of the beam to this and that's the top of the post. Okay, now all I'm going to do is exactly the same as on the other end. I'm going to level across from the top of our ribbon plate Come down 193, 193. Now, the thickness of my beam. <laughs> Okay, there's just one last thing I'm going to do to this post. I'm going to put our beam back on it because our beam has got to be flush with the front of the post. I'm just going to mark the back side because our beam's 65, our post is 90. And I'm just going to cut a 45 degree on there. That'll create a nice little detail. And then run a string line from one end to the other and that'll indicate exactly where to chop off the middle post. So I'm just going to square across from our string line chop that off again, just as the same as we did as the other one. So let's just give the edge just a light little tickle up, take off those sharp points. Then after we've done this, we'll just put a little bit of primer paint on there. Keep it all looking good. The next thing I need to do is to get the overall length of the beam. To do that, I'm measuring from the outside of the post attached to the house to my string line. I then come back 63 millimetres, which gives me the length of the beam. That'll give me a dimension of 5708. Now that's exactly what I'm going to cut my beam to. Okay, the slope on my pergola is 5 degrees, so I'm going to need to cut all my rafters at that 5 degrees. So what I'm going to do is cut a scrap piece of timber, 5 degrees, and transfer that measurement onto the beam. Now I've already cut my beam to length using the old trusty circular saw. Okay, so I'm just gonna start marking out from all our dimensions that we got off the ribbon plate. Now, just have to make sure that you put the rebate on the right side. So I know all my marks are on my left, the rebate will be on the right. Next one is 1901. Now, one of the reasons I cut five degrees 
on my little block of timber. I'll, do, I'll just square that mark down first. Now that five degrees is actually going to give me the exact length that I rebate out of my beam. Rightio, I've set my circular saw to 10 millimetres, so I'm just going to rebate out our beam ready for the rafters. Rightio, that's looking absolutely lovely. Now, the most conventional way of building a pergola is by sitting our rafters on top of our beam. Now, as you can see, this just looks a whole lot nicer and neater by rebating them in. Now apply primer to all bare timber. Now the most conventional way that we attach our beam to our post is by using one of these BOMAC brackets. And that'll bolt all the way through our beam and our post. But you know what? I really don't like the look of this, but I still need a mechanical fixing to attach our beam to our post. So what I am actually gonna use is a length of threaded rod. So I'm gonna drill a hole all the way through our beam and then into our post, and we're gonna glue that in situ. Okay, now it's time to mark out exactly where our holes are gonna go for our threaded rod. So all I've done is push the beam hard up against our post. I've ensured that it's flush with that end here. I know it's overhanging here, so all I have to do is just mark the center of the post on our beam. Now turn the beam over and square it from your centers to the middle of the beam for the position of your holes. Now, just before I rip into drilling this hole, what I have got here is a standard speed bore on the end of a drill extension. Now, the great thing about these drill extensions, you know, pretty much most people have got speed bore sets at home. So all I've done is purchased uh, extensions that you can slot your standard drill bits into it. Now, I'm using a 16 mil speed bore bit. I've got a 12 mil threaded rod, so that's gonna give me plenty of glue around the threaded rod when it goes into the timber. Okay, so I just want to mark the centre of our post, and just to do that, I'm just going to mark the diagonals. Cool. And we just want to drill down about the length of our drill bit, which is 130 millimetres. Now, what is pretty important before we put our glue in there, we just want to make sure that we get all our dust out of there. So you can either blow it out with a compressor or a little hand pump. Rightio, I've already pre-cut my threaded rod using my hacksaw. Now, the length for this was the length of our beam plus our 130 millimetres that went into our hole. So, now it's time to glue up our posts. Now, the type of glue that I'm using to secure these bolts in place is this high performance epoxy anchoring system. Now this one is actually designed for concrete and timber. So we'll just pump. This is a two pot epoxy. So as we squeeze it out, the two parts are mixing. Now we don't want to stuff around too much on this because the glue can go off in hot weather pretty quickly. Rightio, obviously you're gonna need a mate to give you a hand dropping this in place. Just take your time. Now we're just gonna fill that hole full of our epoxy and then link the two together with our threaded rod. Don't be too shy of giving it too much. We want that hole filled up completely. Nice. So all I'm gonna do, drop our threaded rod in place and I'm gonna let that go off overnight. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna clamp the post to the beam so that doesn't move while that's setting. Now, I just wanna repeat the same for our other two posts. 
Rightio, now it's time to cut our rafters. So there's a couple of different ways we can get our length of our rafter. I could use a tape measure and actually physically measure in between our beam and our ribbon plate, or I can actually just take a piece of rafter that is slightly longer, and all I'm gonna do, I've just got that sitting on my nail, and I'm gonna place this on the outside and actually scribe it so I know I can't go wrong. Rightio, here's my first rafter cut. Now I'm just gonna slot that into position. That's fitting nice and lovely. Now I'm gonna use this as a template, take this down the other end, and just check to see if that fits in nice and tight. If that's looking good, I'll just check it one more time in the middle of our beam. And if that's going in nice and tight there, I'll pre-cut all the rafters the same dimension. Now, if you don't feel confident cutting them all exactly the same, you might wanna just be sure is measure each one individually. Just double check that we're looking pretty good down here. That's a nice tight fit. We'll just check in the middle now. Right, yeah, this looking absolutely marvellous. Now I can pre-cut all our rafters exactly the same. Okay, I've installed all the other rafters. I've just saved this last one to show you. What I have done is pre-drilled a five millimeter hole through the front of our beam, because I'm gonna face fix through the beam with this 150 mil bugle screw. Now these are absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna put them in with the impact driver. I don't need to worry about pre-drilling into my rafters, because all these are self-tapping. Now down on the ribbon plate end, what I'm attaching the rafters to the ribbon plate with are these 10 gauge, three inch Galvey screws. Okay, one of the last things I have to do before my purlins go on is just nail down our straps onto our rafters. Now we don't need to fill up the strap every single hole. As long as we've got a minimum of about six nails in there, that'll be good to go. Okay, I'm just about ready to put my purlins on. Now, as per my plan, it shows that I have four purlins sitting on top of the rafters. So what I'm gonna have is one on either end and two in the middle. So all I've done is taken that dimension, divided it by three, that gives me my spaces. So I've got a nail, hooked in down the end. I've got my chalk line attached to it. So all I'm gonna do is just give that a ping. That'll mark all my rafters. My purlins sit on that side of the line. Now I'm ready for my purlins. Use the same string line technique to mark the position of the other middle purlin. So it's one purlin on the ribbon plate, one on the beam, and the other two evenly spaced in the middle. I'm just fixing off my last purlin. Now obviously we've got our straps here, we can't nail it through that. So all I'm gonna do is just pre-drill a hole through the metal strap and then I'm just gonna nail it on by hand. Look at that, a great result. That's really transformed the exterior of this house. We've created an extra outdoor area ready to be enjoyed. And by following the plans, it was easy as.